Hey, what's up, my guys, and welcome back to Gearblocks. Today, we're going to be taking a look at something we've been building on stream. Now, this car itself is not complete, and it has a lot of experimental features. However, the main one is its transmission. This car is using a three-speed automatic transmission. Now, to kind of demonstrate how this is working, I have this little build here. This was our first prototype. Essentially, what is happening is you have your engine, and then you have this little device, which goes off and connects to all of this here. This essentially works as a sensor. So on this side, we have one torque converter, which engages at a really high RPM. On this side, we have a torque converter that engages at a really low RPM. And these values are set in such a way that while the engine is in its normal operating RPM, nothing is happening. However, if the engine goes too high, this clutch engages and begins to drive this belt system one direction. If it goes too low, this clutch engages and drives it the opposite direction. All of that gets ran to this rack and pinion. That rack and pinion starts advancing or starts bringing the gears back and shifting up and down. So if we start this up, holding G, uh, this belt here likes to be finicky. Let's invert that. Are you going to fix yourself? gone and shifted itself into third gear it shouldn't have done that technical difficulties please stand by all right there we go i get it working the belts in this game can be a little bit finicky um i had to add an extra idler for it to route properly hopefully it should be working now so we get this started and what you can see is while the RPM is too low, this clutch is engaged and it's trying to pull the gears back. As soon as it starts to get up to RPM, they're not going until the RPM gets high enough and then it shifts itself into second gear. What then happens is once it's in second gear, because of the extra load on the engine, the RPM drops below what the clutch gear is looking for so it stays in second gear. As it accelerates higher, the RPM raises, it shifts into third, and the RPM drops below the clutch gear's threshold, and it stays in third gear. And the same thing happens when shifting down. This is going to look for an RPM of 1,000 to 900. As soon as it comes down to 1,000, it will shift down, the reduced load on the engine will cause the RPM to jump and it'll stay in second gear until it drops down below again and it jumps when it shifts into first. It stays there until the engine returns to idle. All I'm doing is holding F for throttle and this system does everything by itself. and then let go, and it'll downshift all three gears. So this is the fundamental principle of which our automatic transmission functions. Essentially, we have a system to sense the engine's RPM. On this car, that system is wrapped around the entire engine. You can see the clutches on either side, and then the rack and pinion that pushes the gears back and forth. Now, like I said, this is a prototype system, so it has a lot of experimental things, like a U8 engine going into the three-speed automatic transmission, and a three-differential all-wheel drive system. So, theoretically, every wheel has to be touching the ground, and as a result, this creates a self-limiting system. So if one wheel lifts off, 
The three differentials will dump all that power into the wheel that's not touching, making it spin. That would then, in theory, reduce the speed of the car, bringing that tire back in contact, making it so that you have less likelihood to spin out and less likelihood to have other issues. In theory, I'm, I keep, I keep like pushing that. <sighs> this car has problems and hence why it's not fully finished. So let's show you what it looks like to have a U8 engine into an automatic three speed. The only controls I have are the starter and W, A, S, and D. I cannot control this transmission. There's second. There's third. Oop, and let's see if we can get onto the tarmac and drive this thing around a little bit. This thing's top speed is, I think, 215. Oh, and my sensor has messed up. Do speed. RPM. And before we actually get going, let's check to see what our shift up and down is. Our shift up is at um, 3,900. And our shift down is at 1,900. There's second. There's third. We're going 128, 130, 140. And as we slow down for the corner, uh, I think we're in second. We might be in third. I can't really tell. I need to have a shift indicator on this. Oh yeah, we were in third. Now in theory, I could just keep expanding this into like fourth, fifth. Because it is just a sensor system, it doesn't care how many gears there are. It just knows once it hits a certain RPM, it needs to go up or down. There we go. Another thing that this is doing that's somewhat experimental is with this deferential system and how it provides power to the wheels. I'm also doing most of the braking through that differential system. Ooh. In an attempt to reduce how much the car spins out. The braking in this car is currently, I think, the worst issue with it. If I were to rebuild this car, I'd probably go with a standard drivetrain with the um, differential in the rear and probably like rear wheel drive only. Because this system all wheel drive, while actually quite nice, the way it outputs power is a little unpredictable. And that unpredictableness is what makes it hard to drive, especially at high speeds. And the vibration, the vibration has set in. Oh, and there you go. I... A lot of things just happened there. <laughs> the rear end went squirrely and I was trying to control it. As soon as that happened, we went off the ground and then just the transition from tarmac to dirt caused the suspension to just break instantly. All right, and I want to look at this transmission a bit so you can see it actually shifting. There's second, and there's third. As we come around the corner, there's second, shifted down. And there's first, second, third. It just shifts so smoothly, so nice. If only the driving was better. The the powertrain and transmission are amazing. Like the transmission and engine are amazing. It's just everything else on this vehicle that really 
does not allow it to shine in the way I wish it would have. And the rear axle just vibrates violently. Oh, this thing is so hard to steer. Like, genuinely, I can't be happier with how this transmission turned out. I want to get this concept into a proper car here soon. Alright, we're gonna have to slow down for these corners, because, ooh, that's what I was saying about the braking. It just is so unpredictable. How fast are we actually going through all this, I wonder? It's hard to tell when you're in third person how fast you're actually moving. Oh, and there's that unpredictable power output. Yeah, I think next time I'm going with a more conventional differential setup. Okay. I don't have a reverse, <laughs> so all I can do is bang myself against the wall until I get over that. <sighs> oh, the, just watching that thing shift on its own, I can't, I, I really cannot explain how much I love this transmission. Let's get over here to the race course. to slow down. Ooh. Oh, it went straight to first there. That's interesting. Or did it? No, it was in second. I just thought it went all the way back to first. Sounds so nice when it shifts up. Okay, enough gushing about the engine. I am going to actually end this episode here. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And right now, if you want to help out the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.